ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Everything Scuba. I'm Lyle. Hey, I'm Josh. Lyle and I are avid divers as well as scuba instructors here in the Midwest. We sure are. We're very passionate about diving. We want to make you just as passionate. So find your passion right here at Everything Scuba. Uh, if you're a diver, you want to learn more, become a better diver, you don't know how to dive, you want to learn how to scuba dive, check out our channel. Remember, we can't teach you how to dive here, but we can sure point you in the right direction. If it's interesting to you, click subscribe, ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes. So this is going to be part three of our full face mask diving uh, series. First two, we talked about the OTS Guardian. Ocean Technology Systems makes a full face mask uh, called the Guardian. They make a full face mask called the Spectrum. Uh, I reviewed the Guardian, Josh reviewed the Spectrum. If you missed those videos, click the link above his head, it'll take you back and uh, you can review those videos. Uh, we joke that, you know, be like Darth Vader. You kind of sound like Darth Vader while you're wearing this. Uh, you kind of maybe look a little bit, just given the size of the mask. Uh, it's a fun way to dive. And so now that you've learned more about the products, how do you actually go about becoming certified to wear a full face mask safely and dive safely in it. And so we're gonna walk you through that process a little bit. So with full face mask diver within the PADI world, there's no actual student manual. Um, we don't have literature or digital information that we can hand out to our students. You have gotta spend one-on-one -on -one time with a student uh, and the instructor in a classroom. And so we walk you through, usually that first session is going to be about an hour to an hour and a half process to talk about the mask, introduce it to you, get you familiarized with it, get it fitted properly. Uh, you learned a little bit in the first two episodes about the fact that we have some differences in equalization, particularly the OTS Guardian, there's some little blocks, we want to make sure that fits properly. So we want to talk a little bit about the certification process uh, after we're done with this we're going to show you some in-water training and kind of walk you through the different skills that we'll ask you to do during the certification process. Um, if you're an open water diver, uh, can handle your mask skills, you might find that uh, full face mask is not as complicated as you thought. There's just some nuances that we want to introduce you to to make that happen. So looking at course standards, you need to be at least 12 years old, so a junior open water diver uh, to complete full face mask certification. And we've got one confined water dive, so in pool-like conditions, uh, where we'll introduce you to the mask. Much like open water training, the instructor's gonna demonstrate, well, we'll talk with you about the skills, obviously, ahead of time. Then we're gonna demonstrate that skill, and we'll ask you to repeat the process for us to make sure that you master that in a confined water setting. We then have two open water dives where you will help set up that gear, uh, get it ready to dive, we'll go dive, and you'll repeat most of the skills that we uh, did in the pool, very like open water training again. Um, we're going to take it to a maximum of 60 feet, which for us in the Midwest is tricky to do based on our local dive site, but if you're in other areas where you've got deeper water, that's usually the maximum depth. And there's about 10 hours involved between classroom, confined water, open water dives to uh, complete this course. And so required equipment, obviously you need a full face mask if you want to be full face mask certified. Uh, we generally loan our uh, equipment to the student as part of the price of the class. Josh is getting ready to do his full face mask certification. He already owns a full face mask though, so we don't have to loan ours. Um, you need a standard mask. You need, uh, you need an alternate mask to, to switch to. If your full face mask failed during diving, you have to have the ability to take it off and switch to a regular mask. And you also need an alternate air source. Uh, so your, your main uh, secondary regulator is plugged into your full face mask but you need to have an alternate air source because if this fails, you have to take it off and switch to your alternate, switch to your other mask so you can ascend uh, and be safe. With that, so I, I use my long hose normally mm -hmm. and then a, a short hose for my alternate around my neck. Right. Is that gonna suffice or do I need to go back to a 
a longer hose or a normal long hose? Probably need to go back to a normal okay. long hose. Uh, that would be uh, the for the alternate way to go. Okay. Um, some extra weights. Um, that's always kind of a question mark for some students as well yeah. because uh, we're surrounding our face with a, a little bit more air. Your head is more buoyant uh, than you're used to. And so you may need a pound or two of extra weight uh, compared to wow. what you normally dive with. So that's something that most people don't take into account. You've got this extra air space uh, now in front of your face. So there's definitely cool. some things that make life a little bit more complicated when it comes to using a full face mask. If you have to share air with a buddy, if the mask had a problem underwater, <clears throat> some masks you literally have to take them off, switch to that alternate air source. Um, I know Ocean Reef actually has a, a disconnectable low pressure inflator hose so you can actually switch to someone else's without taking off the mask. But there are things that we need to be aware of that are a little bit more complicated in that term. Um, equalization. Weirdly enough, and I'll talk about this uh, during the certification process too, uh, and we introduced it with the OTS Guardian. I was concerned at first that equalizing with full face mask would be difficult. We don't have the ability to pinch nose um, and, and Valsalva to you know, equalize their ears. Some divers have the ability to just simply swallow and boom, their ears equalize. I don't, I've got one ear that just won't open up that way. Uh, so with a full face mask, um, there's a couple tricks to that. One is we put some blocks inside of there that will actually block your, your nostrils. If you apply pressure up on the mask, so you can equalize. And I find in the first 10 to 15 feet of my descent, I need to use that method. But once you are at depth, your face is being held at the ambient pressure that you're at. And so it's actually a little higher pressure around your face. You, you don't feel it. But I do notice that because I've got higher pressure entering my airway, I can simply swallow and my ears will clear wearing a full face mask. So nice. it's actually easier in some respects than, than wearing a mask as you descend further and further. So stick with us. We're gonna walk you through some of the uh, setup of the face mask, how to put it on, how to take it off, and uh, we'll possibly get to watch Josh doing some skills or me doing some skills underwater as we flood it, clear it, take it off, switch to our other mask and our alternate. So hang around. So a quick rundown of our pre-dive uh, kind of checklist that we're going to do with a full face mask. This mask is still a little wet from our dives yesterday. We disinfected it and uh, so I got a little bit of moisture in there. But uh, prior to diving the mask, uh, much like with our um, other uh, gear, we're always going to do a pre-dive safety check. Um, we're going to do a pre-dive safety check with this. And so I start with the harness system. What I'm going to do is make sure that it, that's fully intact and that all of my uh, contact points, the harness uh, connection points, are uh, intact. Nothing's torn. Uh, nothing's going to come loose during the dive. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this back out of the way so you guys can, can see what I'm looking at here. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the seal. This has a double seal, so I'm going to feel around the inside of here just to make sure there's no, no tears, no cracks. And also I'm going to check the connection point of the seal to the face mask itself. If you're ever going to ha have a <clears throat> major flooding issue with this mask, it's usually going to be because of a torn seal. And so we want to make sure that is completely uh, intact. Interior, uh, again, I'm going to double check uh, way on the inside here. There is a, a little uh, flap for the one-way valve uh, for our uh, ABV. So make sure that that is still there. It's intact. And uh, down on the chin point, again, I'm just going to check this uh, oral nasal pocket and that my blocks are installed. Everything is firm. Everything's in place. And uh, so that's just kind of a visual inspection of the mask, making sure that we're intact. Again, I'm going to make sure my ABV can open and close, and that's going to seal off uh, when I'm done. And that, uh, you know, if we've messed around with this point, the little button that screws out to allow for communications, this should be tight and secure. So just a quick visual inspection to make sure that the mask is ready to go. Uh, next, we're going to show you how we actually don the mask and uh, breathe our regulator prior to diving. 
So guys, we walked you through the um, pre-dive visual check of your mask. Now we're going to kind of do the pre-dive, how do I put it on, uh, how do I breathe my regulator set. So Josh is our model today. Uh, basically, he's done the visual inspection of this and uh, how do we put it on. So first, he's going to make sure that all the straps are loose. Makes it a lot easier to put on. So we're just going to make sure everything is loosened up and we're ready to, to don it. To put this guy on, you want to put your chin into the chin cup first. And so he's going to pull that up over his head, pull the lower straps down below your ears so that when you tighten those up, it doesn't squish your ear against your head. Make sure that his chin's securely seated, and then he's going to just slowly start to tighten the lower uh, portion of the harness, then the middle portion of the harness. And this is just to snug it up. We're not clamping this to our face at this point. Um, and then you'll just do fine-tune adjustments. The mistake a lot of people make is with that top uh, strap, they want to crank on that. And what that tends to do is it's going to want to pull that uh, chin piece either up on your chin or uh, my first few dives, I, I cranked that thing on. And so I was diving and I had this jaw strain the entire time. It should be comfortable. It should be snug so you don't have any leaks. So now he's got that on. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our second stage, uh, which is built specifically for the uh, OTS Guardian. He's going to check that the purge valve works, that it's delivering air. Then he's going to insert it coming from the right side into the opening, and it should go click. Firmly attached, clicked in place, give it a tug to make sure that, that that's not coming out. Now remember to take out that that uh, second stage is a red button inside the mask. So now that that's on, he's not taking that back off. Um, next thing we're going to do is the ABV. We're going to close the ambient breathing valve and Josh is going to actually physically breathe the regulator. This is the Darth Vader portion of the video as we hinted at. So. He's just going to give that four good deep breaths. What we instruct our students to do is to check your air gauge at the same time. You shouldn't be seeing that. If it's a SPG, you shouldn't be seeing that needle going anywhere during four deep breaths. Uh, mine is digital, so uh, that won't be an issue. So now he can reopen his ABV so he doesn't breathe down his, his tank. And he's now ready to, to go dive. Uh, at the end of a dive, normal straightforward dive we're not doing skills to remove the mask all you're going to do is you're going to loosen the bottom loosen the middle and just carefully lift this up off your head just like taking off a hat we're all good to go then you can disconnect your second stage um, josh is going to reseat this and we're going to show you in the event of an emergency. And these are some of the things that we practice during our full face mask certification. And in fact, in a few minutes, you're going to get to see us demonstrate emergency removal and uh, replacement of that mask. And so you're going to snug up the lower, snug the middle, just a little tug on top, securely fasten. In the event of emergency, you don't need to take the time to slowly unclasp all of those uh, attachment points. All you need to do is loosen the bottom two and lift it straight off your face. Just give your chin and nose some space to maneuver and that's going to come off of there. So that's the basics of visual check, placing it on, inserting the second stage, breathing that second stage, closing it up, making sure everything is comfortable. Uh, and how we take it off both at the end of a dive and an event of emergency. So we are going to walk you through some in-water skills now in terms of equalization of this mask and of the spectrum. We're going to show you an emergency removal of the mask. How do we switch to our alternate air and uh, mask? And then Josh in open water will show you how to remove it and replace it also. So stick around.